Hey guys, what's going on? Merry Christmas! Today is December 25th. I wish everyone a very happy Christmas. Today, we are going to talk about how do you start a meditation habit. The new year is coming, and meditation kind of like exercise for our brain, our mind, our parasympathetic nervous system. It's good to stay relaxed and get rid of stress. It's very good for our body. But how do you start a meditation as a habit? So we are going to talk about my top seven tips. Tips number one: Don't do goal setting where nobody holds you accountable. Instead, create a pledge. Write down a day, location. What you like to do? Maybe it's exercise. Maybe it's meditation. It can be anything. And then you sign your name on this piece of paper and post it onto your social networking site like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you are using, and let your friend be the witness of your pledge, and let your friend hold you accountable. When you do goal setting. On your own, nobody is hold hold you accountable. You are holding yourself accountable, and after three weeks, you are like, ah, I don't feel like it. So, this is what is powerful about making a pledge. You literally make it into a contract, and then sign your name on it, and find a witness to hold you accountable. A pledge is enforceable in the court of law. And this is the technique of using the positive peer pressure to get you out of your laziness. Like positive peer pressure, we're talking about、mm, teenager doing bad things together. But you can transfer that peer pressure into a positive pressure, help you get out of your laziness. So it works for meditation. It works for exercise. It works for. Eating clean, whatever you want to work on, to change your life, make a habit, it always work. Make a pledge. Number two, create a meditation calendar. You can go to this website. You click this link, the timeanddate.com, and then you can go to whatever the month you're working on, and then you can just go print, hit the print button, and once you have the calendar printed. Every day after your meditation, you can write it down. Oh, today I do 20 minutes, and then you can rate your session. You know, from one to ten, ten is very good. One is horrible. You keep moving. You cannot stop thinking. And five is is average. So you keep track of your time. You tr- keep track of your quality. And after two weeks, three weeks, you can see a progress. And you can visualize your own improvement. And the key is improvement. When you see yourself improve, as you do this practice, you will get excited. You feel happy because we always want to feel this improvement. We always want to be better. And when you feel that betterness in yourself, you have stronger motivation. It builds up. And number three. Find one or two music track and stick with it. So you need to p- find one or two music that you really like. It totally make you relax, and then use it as a timer. So if you if your goal is ten minutes, you find a ten minute meditation music. If your goal is twenty minutes, you find a twenty minute meditation music. So as soon the music is playing, you go into your meditation posture. And then you don't come out until the music finish. And remember, meditation is not sleeping. So it doesn't matter you sit cross-legged, you sit on a chair, you sit on the sofa. The most important is to have your back straight. Like as soon as your back is supported, you fall asleep. And meditation is not sleeping. Otherwise, you just just go lie in the bed and sleeping. It's not meditate. And another tips to keep you awake is to hold a mudra. 
So as soon as you fall asleep, you will notice your hand become loose, and then you can refocus again and trying to hold your hand again. So you can do it on your right hand, or you can do it on your left hand. Usually, one hand is enough. And if you notice yourself keep falling asleep, then you should stop meditating. Just go sleep, have a nap, and once you have enough sleep, then you can meditate again. Okay, tip number four: join a meditation group. So if you go to meet up. Uh, there are lot of different kinds of meditation groups, class. Some is free, some cost a little bit money, and it's up to you to experiment and try it out different meditation group, and see which one can work with you the best in terms of location, in terms of time, in terms of the people that go in there. And once you've gone to a few, then you will know okay which one you should stick with, and. A group meditation allows you to associate with like-minded people, and it gives you、uh, another layer of motivation. And sometimes you have question about your practice; you're not sure if you're doing right.、Uh, it's kind of nice to have somebody who is more experienced and can share your experience, or sometimes. You want to share your experience to others. Like maybe there are other people less experienced than you. Then you can share your experience and teach them, guide them how to become better at meditation. And tip number five: meditation apps from Android and iOS. So there are different kinds of meditation apps you can get on your phone, and. I've used a couple of them, like the、uh, Calm apps, and it has like reminder. It pops up, get you to mo- to meditate. It has timer. It keep track of your progress.、Uh, a lot of those apps they give you some session is free, and if you want to do more advanced stuff, more advanced function, then you need to pay money.、Um, I found the app it's helpful for beginner. Like w- when you are starting, you're still not sure what you're doing. Like this app can be very helpful, give you the right tips. Now, once you become more experienced, you kind of don't need it anymore, and you can just、uh, mm, just put the music and you're ready to meditate. Okay, tip number six: get meals. It's a Bluetooth headset. Let me pause the video recording here. Okay, I have it right here. So this is the、uh, Bluetooth headset that you put on your head and you wear it, and it will measure your brain wave as you meditate. And at the end of the session, you can see your result. So there's like two EEG sensor and on your forehead, and then another one on your ear, and another one on the other side of the ear. So these four sensor pick up your brain wave signal. And when you finish your meditation, let's say ten minutes, twenty minutes, and you can see your result on your phone, and it will tell you how many points you get and. How many minutes you are in the active? Your brain was thinking something, and how many minutes your brain is very calm. Now it is kind of expensive.、Uh, for me, I pay around three hundred dollar, and depending on the holiday promotion, you might be able to get it for two hundred dollar. If you get a used one, maybe hundred dollar. It's a pretty good deal, and. Once again, this is kind of helpful when you are beginning. You're not sure what you're doing. You, with this EEG, you can see how you do, and you can order this from their website if you click on the link, or you can order it from Amazon or get go to any Best Buy,、uh, Target, Amazon. You can get them, and these are. This is no toy.、Eh? This is medical grade EEG device. 
so definitely it's very scientific and it's very helpful if you want to uh, learn and become better with meditation and it definitely give you the motivation when you can see uh, your points uh, progress getting better uh, that's the advantage of this device now there's some disadvantage which is you have to charge it like every three or four days you have to plug into USB and then charge the battery and sometimes it's kind of clumsy you need to have your phone you need to connect the Bluetooth you need to do the synchronization blah 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 and versus you just turn on the music and you get into the posture uh, so it's totally up to you like in the beginning it's definitely very helpful so you know you are in the zone you are quieting your mind and you can focus and tip number seven go to India for a spiritual and uh, meditation retreat uh, Rishikesh is a spiritual city in northern India. There are many ashrams around there. You can learn to meditate and different school of spirituality. In that city, there's a law to be vegetarian. It's illegal to sell any meat and the entire city are vegetarian. So I went to Rishikesh in the year 2011. So that's around six years ago. And it was a really fun trip. I stayed at many different ashrams and meet different people and learning different uh, yoga from from different places uh, it's really an awesome experience uh, versus like you take a holiday to japan to korea you know everything is same now with globalization you get out of airport you stay in the hotel there's mcdonald's there's starbucks and there's Burger King anywhere you go it's pretty much the same when you go to India you don't see the globalization in India and you get this unique and spiritual experience that can enhance your personal life okay so finally I want to say that uh, to practice meditation we need to separate science and religion because any type of meditation you are going to learn from outside there are always some religion involved and Albert Einstein once said science without religion is lame religion without science is blind so in the western world uh, many people are very scientific and they don't have the religion mindset and sometimes that could be dangerous when we let our emotion desire go out of control a lot of trouble could happen so for Western people who are knowledgeable in science and research method they need to learn religion from India and the essence of most religion is the rules and regulation of human body and we can summarize it with five simple points you know out of most religion you know this is kind of the common rules that people follow in different religion okay no meat eating killing animal violence dairy eggs so like vegetarian and number two no intoxicant no drugs alcohol coffee tea and if you click on this one is anything caffeinated so this is a very good website it tells you uh, what kind of food contains caffeine and you will be surprised uh, caffeine is put into a lot of products like even soft drinks even uh, chocolate and because caffeine is addictive so the manufacturers like to put it in it so that you are addictive in buying their product if you don't drink it you you if you don't eat it you don't feel that happiness and three is illicit sex sex only within marriage and number four no gambling and number five is compassion and tolerance like a lot of situation you could encounter conflict with your co-worker conflict with your neighbors and most of the religion 
will teach you to tolerate and to love your neighbor. And that's for Western people. Now, on the other hand, the people from India, they need to learn scientific knowledge and research method. Like myself, I found many Indian they got confused with religion and science. And when the two get mixed up, they become blind faith. When a person putting the Harry Potter book in the science section of a library, a lot of confusion could happen to this person. A scientific person can meditate with the knowledge of GPS and satellite and moving further in life. A blind faith person can also meditate, but still believe our Earth is flat and going nowhere. So. These are my top seven tips for developing meditation as a habit for you. And here I wish you a lot of good luck, peace, love, passion. Comment below, subscribe my channel, and sum up my video. What well, I'll talk to you next time. Bye for now.